Welcome to Univet's Inside the Octagon. I'm John Gooden and I'm joined as always by our expert analyst Dan the Outlaw Hardy. The most dominant flyweight fighter of all time, Demetrius Johnson, will look to defend his title for the seventh time at UFC 191 in a rematch against the man who pushed the champ to an epic five round war, the magician John Dodson. Mighty Mouse Johnson, perfect technique, lightning fast. There's no one better. Dodson is the real threat. He has ridiculous one-punch knockout power. Whoa! Ah! Andre Arlovsky right in the mix. In the heavyweight title picture. What a performance by Frank Mir! So taking a look at the main card then, Dan, UFC 191 live from Vegas on September 5th. We've got a lot of European interest on that one. We have. I'm, I'm excited to see Jan Blachowicz on the card again. I, I really don't feel like he showed what he's capable of in his last fight. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Manu, who was his opponent in his previous fight, he's on this card again. And Huge battle yeah, for him. Yeah, it's a really, really fun fight to watch. And then we have Paige Van Zandt and Alex Chambers. That'll be a really good fight in the strawweight division. Yeah, excellent stuff. Well, let's bring it back round to the main event then. Demetrius Johnson versus John Dodson. They're going to go at it one more time and a very worthy opponent the number mm. one challenger and I think to start us off Dan what better way to cue it up than to take a look back at that first epic war that they had together yeah it makes perfect sense I mean it was a really good fight it was over five rounds it was a, a really tightly contested fight arguably John Dodson won the first couple of rounds with his knockdowns and that's something that, that uh, Mike Mouse has really got to watch going into this second fight John Dodson's a very powerful striker for this weight division, very strong, very explosive, and very, very quick. Yeah. And there were a couple of times where Demetrius Johnson was trying to move in, trying to push forward and put him up against the fence, and John Dodson caught him with nice, clean shots. There was a beautiful left hook, which we'll see in a second as well. And this other thing as well, posting on the head, refusing to be taken down is something that's going to be really, really useful in this it, fight. Does he? he doesn't, not ever. It's like he's got springs on, in his shorts. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> but watch this. Short left hand there knocked him down, and then we're going to see the, uh, the, the, the left hook here as well. Glancing blows, but obviously Dodson's got the power to put his opponents down, you know, particularly earlier on in the fight. And Demetrius Johnson's got to be aware of this. Now, one thing I want to talk about with Johnson is the fact that he's very good at adapting during the fight. He's, he's a very smart fighter, and given the fact, the fact that he's got Matt Hume in his corner as well, which I, I think is a huge advantage, they're both very good. They've got a good working relationship, and they High adapt. Fight IQ as yeah, well. very, very good. They, they adapt as the fight's going on. So if there's a problem uh, in the first couple of rounds, like there was with John Dodson, they have the ability to adapt and, and to solve those problems as the fight's taking place. And in this particular bout, they, uh, they decided that the best thing to do was to crowd John Dodson. As we know with powerful punchers, if, they, if they're pushed, if they're forced to wrestle early on in the fight, that starts to drain him. It'll take some of that pop out of the punchers. And that was, that was exactly what he did to get the decision in that fight. And something that's key when you're trying to change things up is your conditioning, your stamina, your yeah. ability to push the pace in a certain area that might not be as natural to you, but Demetrius Johnson, he can do it in any, in any range, yeah. wrestling, striking, whatever, so his stamina is key. Well, he just never slows down, and this is, this is something that is a huge weapon against his opponents. Now, um, he doesn't throw with power. He's quite economical. He's very good at placing his shots and picking his moment. I like this fight with, uh, with Joe Benavidez here. This wasn't a big power punch that he threw. It was just perfectly timed. He caught Benavidez as he was moving forward. Caught his with a nice right always hook. spot on as well, isn't it? It, it is. And, and this is something else I want to talk about as well is his constant switching of stance. Watch this. A right hand switches his stance, comes with the rear knee. So that's two, that's two rear shots. That's a backhand yeah. from the right, and that's a left knee from the back as well. Just maximizing the power from everywhere. Exactly, exactly. And, and always able to, to be in a stance where he can generate power, regardless of where the fight's going. Now, we move into the second round and we're on the floor, and this is something that I, I picked out. I've, I've been a bit of a nerd about this movement. I really like it. So, as you can see here, uh, uh, Johnson's got his hand on Cariasso's knee. He's working a guard pass, and Cariasso is, is arguably doing the right thing in holding uh, Johnson's wrist to try and take some control of that. So, as the, pro as the position progresses on here, you're going to see Demetrius Johnson slide his knee through it and then... Because because um, uh, Cariasso still got his hand on the wrist, Johnson he doesn't want to get hit. Exactly, but doing the smart thing, Johnson's not resisting He's that. Just riding He's that. holding He's that out there so him. he can pass his knee straight over and straight into crucifix. One of the worst positions to be well, in a mixed martial arts contest. Most definitely. GSP made this very famous, and, and sure. as did Matt Hughes and other strong wrestlers. If you can get a guy in this position, you can land some unanswered shots. It, it may not get the fight finished, but it may set up something else. When somebody's on the floor 
getting hit and they can't defend it, they start offering arms and, and necks and those kind of things. And this is where Demetrius Johnson gets, gets very interesting and very dangerous. Uh, again, in, in this fight with Horiguchi, he's pushing the pace, he's trying to keep pressure on Horiguchi. And the benefit in him having this fight as his last one is that Horiguchi moves a lot like Dodson. He's very explosive, he's quite unpredictable, and he can be quite reckless as well. So you'll see him progressing forward very quickly, throwing wild punches, and Johnson does a good job of timing these and level changing underneath. And this is something he's going to have to do against John Dodson because... Horiguchi was so unpredictable as yeah. well. He is, and as is John Dodson, and, and he's got that confidence to just crash forward. So the level changes and the timing is going to be really important. Now, here we are again. He gets the crucifix position on Horiguchi, and it, and it was quite a strong position. He landed some shots. Horiguchi's doing the right thing, trying to get his guard back here. You can see him pulling this knee in and trying to create space. Just watch this. This is, it, it was silky smooth. We've got you know a few seconds left in the last round. Johnson's going to slide this knee up to pin uh, Horiguchi's hand and arm to his side and then Very replace nice. it with his foot as he sits back for the arm bar. It's, he waited a long time to do it, though, again. Well, I know, I know, last <laughs> second of the fight. But, you know, if you're going to get a dramatic finish, yeah. the last second of the fight is the one to do it. And, you know, it's the latest submission in UFC history as well. So that's another thing that he can add to his record, his resume. But everything else that goes yeah, with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So on to John Dodson, then. Yeah. Uh, as we were saying, very similar to Horiguchi in his movement. He's here, there and everywhere and comes in with a lot of momentum. I think for this fight, though, he's got to really make a mark in that octagon and, and take control of it. Yeah, well, it's the first two rounds again. This is where he's, he's the most powerful, he's the most explosive. He did some things well in the, in the last fight and he did some things wrong. And, and in his three fights since then, he's, he's, he's shown improvements. He's shown much better placement of his punching power. He, he's shown much better placement of his feet inside the octagon. He's doing a much better job of holding the center. And this is going to be something that's important with, with Mighty Mouse. If he can hold the center and he can have confidence in his speed, his reaction time, and his takedown defense, those first two or three rounds for Mighty Mouse are going to be really rough. And the reason that, that the tide started to turn uh, in the previous fight was because Dodson didn't mind being circled back onto the fence, which is where Johnson's the strongest. Okay. Johnson will push forward if your back's on the fence, whereas if Dodson can keep hold of the center and force Johnson onto the back foot, then he's going to stand a much better chance of landing these kind of shots where yeah. he can recklessly push forward and land big shots like he did here against Zach Makovsky. Now, this is his last fight. As you can see here, relying on his takedown defense, instead of relying on the fence being behind him to lean up against, he's relying on his reaction time, heavy on the neck, heavy on the head, posting with hands and creating space. And because he is such an athlete, he is quick enough to be able to do this and just stay in the center. Watch this lift. Mikoski is a fantastic wrestler. Yeah, arguably one of the best wrestlers in the division. Definitely. And watch this again. We're going to see that post one more time. Mikoski steps in, posts on the back of the head, and then throws a knee straight off it. Beautiful timing. So technically, he doesn't need to use the fence. He's got plenty of work that he exactly. can do in the centre of the octagon. He doesn't need to be on the fence. And this is something that is, whether it's a bad habit, whether it's something that he just, because he's so quick, he doesn't really care, but he does get circled onto the fence. And more for the mentality of, of Johnson. When Johnson's back's on the fence, he switches to a defensive mode and starts to try and find his way off and back into the centre. So Dodson really needs to try and hold that centre and keep that pressure on, on Johnson particularly early on in the fight. It'll be good to see how he is with this second fight after his ACL surgery as well. Perhaps he was blowing away the cobwebs against Mikovsky. It'll be good to see what he comes for that rematch. Yeah, good good timing for the gold. So let's take a look at the facts and the stats and see what they tell us about this matchup. And well, you can see how dominant Demetrius Johnson is as the champion, but John Dodson just behind him, Dan, really, with, with most of those stats. Yeah, obviously, you know, fantastic takedown defense. That's going to be something that's, that's really important. And, and highest knockdown rate as well. This is, you know, as we said, he, he's probably the most powerful puncher in that flyweight division. And no one knows that better than, than Demetrius Johnson yeah. from their first fight. So it's going to be fantastic to see it play out and to see how they've adapted to face each other a second time because with, the, with them being such high level athletes sure they've both got so much potential to move on and to you know to, to become much greater than they already were in that that first fight yeah a lot of value for your money watching those two. definitely <laughs> great stuff so let's take a quick look at the odds for this fight will mighty mouse continue his dominance over the 125 pound division or will the magician put in the performance of his life and walk away with UFC gold. The judges decided the first encounter between these two, will we see a repeat or will we see a finish? 
As always, there are odds to be found on every round, and it's all brought to you by Unibet. Watch and bet live with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. So on to the rest of the main card and two fighters that I grew up loving the UFC, Dan. Two heavyweight guys, resurgent former champions, Andre Olovsky and Frank Mir. They are going to do battle and I am really happy about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a really exciting one. It's weird, I was thinking about this last night. When you've got two guys like Olovsky and Mir, they, they kind of surpass the regular fighter, athlete kind of vibe and they become almost superheroes. <laughs> and these yeah. two guys definitely fall into that category and their last fights, I mean, this, this war between Travis Brown and Andre Olosky was amazing. One of the best heavyweight fights I've ever seen. Teammates or former teammates and, as well. And that's what makes it so much more interesting because a lot of the time when teammates fight, training partners fight, there's a bit of a standoff. They're, they're, they're too, too respectful. They didn't read that line. <laughs> Not at all. Not, didn't get that memo at all. <laughs> and they were just swinging for the fences. It was a really, really great fight. And Andre Olosky, it's nice to see him back in the UFC really where he belongs. I mean, he's, he's a world-class fighter and there's no doubt about that. Yeah. As is Frank Mir, as you can see, Ricky Lundell in his corner, fantastic wrestling coach. So Frank Mir's really got a lot of confidence in his striking now and that, I believe, is partly down to the fact that he's much more confident in his takedown defence. But that shot against Todd Duffy was unbelievable. Look at that big oh. <laughs> big hook from Todd Duffy and he ran straight onto that short right like hand. Like a clothesline. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And, and Frank Mir, you know, he's got the ability to finish the fight wherever it goes and that's what makes him so exciting. He is a finisher and in the heavyweight division we all like to see a big finisher and, and Frank Mir is that guy. So him against Andre Olovsky, who knows what's going to happen. It's like Batman fighting Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth-watering stuff. <laughs> Uh, but we also got two light heavyweights as well. A guy that you know very well, Anthony Johnson, yep. is taking on the Brit, Jimmy Manua. A massive opportunity for Jimmy yeah. to, to leapfrog a load of guys to get up there for potential title contention. Yeah, well, Anthony Johnson, he's, you know, he's such a scary guy in this, in this division. Everyone knows how powerful he is. Everyone knows you know, the potential that he has in this division that he really hasn't quite realised yet. This fight against Phil Davis was, in my opinion, one of his best performances. He just shut Phil Davis down. It's fantastic takedown defense, beautiful placement of his, of his striking. Interestingly about Anthony Johnson, there are two things I want to point out. One is that, is that he stands very square all the time. Interesting it, footwork, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's so confident in it, but every time you see Phil Davis try and shoot a takedown, it's just like he's running into a wall. And what it allows him to do is it allows him to use this side step so he can slip punches. He uses it just there, you see beautifully, and again just there. It's like a little Stevie Wonder-like side yeah. nod so he can get <laughs> out of the way. It's, it's an interesting tactic and not many people can get away with it, but Anthony Johnson does. And again here, he'll place a hand, he'll measure with one hand while he hits with the other. Because this is his weapon, he knows this right hand can put people to yeah. sleep. So he's always looking for that shot and, and there it is. Oh. And against Alex Gustafsson, he, he really showed you know, the potential that he has, the punching power that he has. Gustafsson doing what he normally does, being on his toes, being moving around, and Anthony Johnson just stalking forward and looking for that single shot that's going to close the fight. And again, measuring with that lead hand. Keeps one hand on so he knows the other one's going to land. And once it was on the floor, he just weighed on him, chopped him down, and kept beating him up. And Mark Goddard did the right thing to step in when he did. It was a... You know, it was a really good fight for, for both guys, but unfortunately for, uh, for Gustafsson in Stockholm, yeah, it was Anthony tough. Johnson that got the win. Um, and we know that Anthony Johnson's got the potential to go much further. We know he's got the athletic ability and we know he's got the punching power. But when he's running into guys like Cormier, that's when his conditioning comes into play. Now, with, uh, with uh, Jimmy Manua, that's a different ball game entirely because they're very, very similar fighters. Yes. I would say that Jimmy Manor was much more of a traditionally trained kickboxer. He stands more side on, he uses more traditional head movement, but their strength and their punching power is very, very similar. Now, it's going to be interesting to see whether these two, two guys want to go toe to toe. My instinct tells me that Jimmy Manua is going to want to stand and trade. I'm expecting uh, Rumble Johnson to, to employ a bit more of a wrestling game, but we, we know that, uh, that Manu has got good takedown defense. And that little hop side kick that he does, he uses it quite often. If you're fighting a guy that stands square, it's so much easier to hit them with that step side kick. We saw Conor McGregor use it to good effect against Manny Mendes. There you go, there you go. And, and you know, straight into the midsection, it upsets their balance. And, and the, the kicking game of, of Jimmy Manu as well could be something that can cause a lot of problems. For, Remember, he wasn't able to use that in his last fight because he had a knee injury, go. essentially fought with half a knee. So, so now, you know, being back hopefully at 100%, and he's been training with Gustafsson as well, which is a, a, you know, a, a real benefit to him. Yeah. I think we're going to see much more of a performance like we saw against Kyle Kingsbury, where he was sharp, he was in shape, he was landing. 
I mean, fair play to Carl Kingsbury for taking those shots. A lot of guys wouldn't be able to. So the idea of, of, of Manawa and Johnson going toe-to-toe is a really, really exciting thing. One guy's going to go down. Now, just, I've just got, I had to put this in at the end. Look at this. Kingsbury, one of the biggest light heavyweights <laughs> the UFC has ever seen, and Jimmy Manawa just stands up, just like, no, I'm done. Powered through that. I've had enough of that. So this is another question is, can Anthony Johnson hold him down? And if he can, how long can he hold him down for? Someone's going to sleep, though. I, 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 don't, I, I can't see any other way this fight's going to end. That's the way the fans would want it. Well, exactly. They don't want AJ to come and control the pace <laughs> no, and no, things like that. No. We want to see people kicking and punching yes, one we another. Do. We like finishes. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Thanks, Dan. Well, the winner of this match could well be in line for a shot at the light heavyweight title. That belt, of course, is being contested at the upcoming UFC 192 event, where current champion DC takes on Swedish challenger Alexander Gustafsson. Before that, though, the UFC makes its return to the historic Saitama Super Arena in Japan for a fight night headlined by heavyweights Josh Barnett and Roy Nelson. As always, you can get all the pre-fight odds for these events with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. Now, if you want to have your say on any of those fights, make sure you get involved in the conversation by tweeting to us at Unibet using the hashtag Inside the Octagon. That's it from us. Enjoy UFC 191. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you when we break down UFC 192 DC versus Gus.